Now at 6 on Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45, Triad police are investigating a string of car break-ins at three churches. Plus, the battle over voting districts takes center stage in Greensboro. But first, we remember our friend. He was real. He wanted to hear your story. He wanted to share your story. Friends and colleagues are sharing memories about the life of one of our own tonight. We remember Time Warner Cable News Sports Director Jim Connors. You're watching Time Warner Cable News on ABC 45. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Sharon Stone. We'll have those stories coming right up first here at 6. Meteorologist Monty Montello is here with the first check of your weather on the ones. Monty. Hey, Sharon. Back to you. Jim Connors checking in from the RBC Center, home to the 58th NHL All-Star Game. Jim Connors checking in from Pinehurst. Jim Connors checking in from PNC Arena. Jim Connors checking in from the ACC football kickoff. Jim Connors checking in from the Greensboro Coliseum. It is with great sadness we report the loss of a Time Warner Cable News family member. Jim Connors passed away Saturday after short and sudden illness. Jim was sports director in our Raleigh newsroom and the co-host of Sports Night. He was a seasoned sportscaster. He anchored sportscasts right here on ABC 45 in Winston-Salem. He was in New Bern as well as Bluefield, West Virginia and Billings, Montana before joining Time Warner Cable News in 2002. Jim was part of the team who helped launch then News 14 Carolina. Jim's accomplishments range from anchoring our coverage of the Final Fours, U.S. Opens, to reporting from the sidelines of the state high school football and basketball championships. Funeral arrangements have not been released. In addition to his Time Warner Cable News family, Jim is survived by his wife, Kim, and two teenage children. Jim Connors was 51 years old. Friends and peers of our late sports director, Jim Connors, celebrated his life today. Those who knew him best shared the memories of a life well lived. Jay Hardy brings us one of those stories. Happy Monday, everybody, and welcome to the David Glenn Show. For North Carolina sports radio host David Glenn, talking pays his bills. Tampa Bay is actually playing pretty good football right now. But today, while remembering his good friend, former Time Warner Cable News sports director Jim Connors, Glenn struggles to find the right words. I remember him first as a man who loved his family. He's our guest next on the day. Tackling Glenn numerous show. subjects daily, Glenn Glenn takes comments ball. from listeners, really some well. right in tune with what's they troubling Glenn. Uh, first of all, I wanted to give my condolences to uh, the family, Jim Connors, and the folks over in the media world at Time Warner. That's a pretty cool legacy in my eyes, to be great at what you are as a professional, but even better as a person. Time Warner Cable News great sports call. anchor Mike Solarte joined Glenn in honoring Connors. There's a huge void left in, in our buildings but there's a big void left in, in North Carolina sports. Um, but how would, I, how would I best sum up Jim? Well, the best way to sum up Jim is that good things come in small packages. He may have been small in stature, but he was big in heart. He was big in, in everything he tried to do. I'll also remember him as a great friend of mine, an unbelievable consummate pro and colleague, and a guy who has that rare double in life. He was great at what he did for a living, but he was an even better person. The show will go on. And Glenn will continue to broadcast, as he says, just as his friend Jim would have it. In Raleigh, Jay Hardy, Time Warner Cable News. As the news of Jim Connors passing started to spread, friends, colleagues, viewers, and others across the state took to social media to offer their condolences and share their favorite memories. Let's show you some. Joe Myers retweeted UNC basketball, our deepest condolences to the Connors family and TWC News family with the passing of TWC sports anchor Jim Connors. Wayne Peace University says shocking news today about the death of Jim Connors. Jim and Ryan covered the success of WPU hoops last year. Jim's son, Bryce, retweeted Mark Larson, who said, Still can't believe my friend Jim Connors is gone. Spent a day golfing and grilling in July. Wish I'd let him win. And then I tweeted that picture there. It still makes me smile. Uh, Jim is realizing he is the bump shot at the end of our 11 p.m. WXLV newscast. And actually, after that, he realized when he was in the shot and kind of awkwardly backed out of the camera and just made it funnier. And on a personal note, Jim mentored me professionally and I'm gonna miss his guidance. I'm gonna miss seeing him every day when he walked by my desk. And um, I was wondering how I was gonna to continue to tell you about the news of the day and I just thought of Jim. And he once told me, it does not matter what is going on in your life, 
for that half an hour you were on air, nothing else matters and you need to put your best foot forward every single time. That is what I will attempt to do for the rest of this newscast. So let me now walk you through the news of the day. Attorneys challenging North Carolina's 2011 legislative districts want them blocked from being used again before a new election cycle starts next week. A three-judge panel is hearing the challenge from registered voters over where the state should be forced to redraw some of its legislative districts before the 2016 elections. Lawyers for the voters and the state were in federal court today over one of the three pending redistricting lawsuits. The plaintiffs want the districts blocked from being used in 2016 and want candidate filings on December 1st delayed until updates of the boundaries are set. Anita Earls with the Southern Coalition for Social Justice says the injunction is needed now because lawmakers moved up that primary from May to March. The state's attorneys contend judges should delay any decision until other redistricting litigation is resolved. Winston-Salem police are searching for a hit-and-run driver who injured a school crossing guard. Police say 33-year-old Patrice Hurd was working in front of South Fork Elementary on Country Club Road when she was hit. Investigators say she was hit by a tan-colored minivan it was traveling west on Country Club Road. She suffered minor injuries to her left leg and was taken to Wake Forest Baptist Medical Center for treatment. If you saw anything, you are asked to call police. Thieves strike during church services in the Twin Cities. Several cars at three different churches were broken into while the drivers worship yesterday. Brandon Lavornia has some important tips on preventing your car from becoming a target. You can call Winston-Salem Police if you have any information about those break-ins, or you can call Crime Stoppers, 336-727-2800. Police have made four arrests after a brawl outside of Lollipop's Club early yesterday morning. Investigators say they responded to North Cherry Street around 445, where a large group of patrons was involved in a fight at the intersection of West 6th Street. The four men were charged with fighting in public and disorderly conduct. A couple of weeks ago, two men were arrested following a mugging outside the strip club. The city started the process of trying to shut down the club, citing repeated police reports and complaints from neighbors. This 65-year-old man is charged with taking indecent liberties with a child. Sherman Thompson of Graham faces two counts in an incident investigators say involved a girl under the age of 15. Thomas is being held in the Alamance Detention Center on a quarter million dollar bond. A new strain of canine influenza, that's dog flu, caused quite a scare over the summer and an outbreak across many parts of the country. Here in North Carolina, there were 10 confirmed cases of that virus. Meg Smith has more on a brand new vaccine that could help protect your four-legged friend from the disease. Mm -hmm. Symptoms of dog flu include coughing, fatigue, and loss of appetite. If you see symptoms, you're advised to call your vet immediately. According to AAA, almost 47 million Americans plan to hit the road this week. State law enforcement officials want to crack down on dangerous driving. Authorities are working to catch speeders, distracted and drunk drivers, as well as seatbelt violations. The National Safety Council says seatbelts will save more than 100 lives this holiday. A lot of folks feel like if they're in the back seat that you know, they don't need to wear the belt as much as they would in the front seat, uh, but that's not the case. Uh, you know, a large number of folks are actually that are involved in a crash are thrown from the vehicle if they're unbelted. The efforts are part of NC Highway Patrol's I-40 Thanksgiving Challenge and NC Interstate Challenge, as well as Click It or Ticket. Last year, 33 people were killed in automobile incidents over the Thanksgiving holiday weekend. Students at an Alamance County Elementary School are giving back ahead of their Thanksgiving holiday. Three fifth graders are using what they learned in the classroom to build cans for cancer, a business benefiting Relay for Life. Elena O'Connell caught up with the young entrepreneurs and shares their story. The Relay for Life race is in May. If you'd like to donate, you can visit our website, twcnews.com. Just do a search for cans for cancer. And stay with us.